Translation of function declaration. So the translation of function declaration just has to do, it has to do the, the three things that we talked about before. You have to make explicit what is the code and what is the um, prototype, and then the heap allocations as well. So whenever we have a function, notice that it's an anonymous function, there's no name to it. What do we do? Well, we have to generate this whole thing, right? Where highlighted in yellow is the code that we are actually generating, right? So in this regard, this, this is just um, to make the code fit. We're going to see what it means. Okay. So what do we have here? We have allocation. Right, so this corresponds to this alloc here, and then we have the object. So we have object, and then we have two fields code and prototype. So code is here and prototype because we always have to initialize the prototype to be empty. So, how do we do that? This line of code, well, we generate it with the following piece of code. So, you, be, you should be generating a j alloc and then inside a j object that is empty. Okay, so then this code inside you can disregard because this is recursively generated from the body of the function so you really don't you shouldn't care about what is not highlighted in yellow because that's handled recursively okay so we only care about what is in yellow so then what we need to do we need to do a, one last change which is add the this so originally we have a, a function right that takes a certain number of parameters we have to make explicit this so we need to add a new parameter to the lambda right so what do we need to do when we are create when we create a, here we're going to have a, a lambda from the source language so what we need to do is we need to create a new a, an object of the target language which is a j lambda so we need to copy the variables and we need to convert them right to make so that they're variables from here and we need to add a new variable. So we need to do a cons on the result of this. So convert from the variables from the source language to the target language. So you can do that usually with a map, right? It's a very trivial thing. We want to convert everything that was a, a variable from the source language. You want to convert it to a variable from the target language, reusing the same names. And then we want to add a new variable, which is this. And you need to do a cons on the result of the conversion. That's the last bit. And then what we do, we need to recursively translate the body. So the body that we have from a function, we, we take S uh, function body, and then we do translation of that recursively. That's basically it. So the, the biggest confusion that happens here is forgetting to do the translation of this, or forgetting to convert from um, source language variables to target language variables. Note that I'm using different fonts to represent different things. So the italic font means source language and the sans serif font means target language. But you will just get contract um, errors if you mismatch the types. Okay, so that covers function declaration. Now let's look at the new keyword. The new keyword has all this code. So let's look at that. What is it doing? First, I'm going to give a, an intuitive explanation of what the code is doing, and then I'm going to explain line by line what's going on. So the, the idea is we need to, we have an expression that is the function, and then we have the arguments of the being passed to the new, right? So because this is a function, we need to dereference it. And because this is a, an expression on the source language, we need to translate it. So we translate the expression and we dereference it so that we, got, we get the, the function object, right? Because it is a function object, we need to then allocate the, the new object with the proto fields, right? In the in lambda js, it's not underscore underscore proto; it's dollar proto. That's what they de de decided. 
So that's what you should be doing. So next, what we do, we do what is here, right? We say we take ctor and then we look up field. So this is going to be this code right here. Get field of ctor. So again, we are declaring a, a local variable and this again could create problems. So you have to be careful with that. For now, just use ctor and then look at the util and see what you should be using. There's a, a nice documentation explaining there, hopefully. Um, then the third line, what we're doing is we're allocating the object. Proto oh, we, we did that already. And finally, what we do, we look up in the object the code, and then we call it, and we have to pass obj, right? And we have to translate every argument. Okay, so there's all of, all of this going on. So let's look at the example. The example we are doing new shape, and we're passing 0 and 1. And that generates this whole, this code. There is a lot of code. So what do we do here? First, we dereference shape. So this would be the translation of shape. You be very careful, careful that you have to recursively translate this, the the object. Otherwise, you would get in this case a variable. You would be doing deref of a source variable rather than a target variable, and that is handled recursively. And then what we do, we declare it to a variable. So here we're declaring it to ctor. And then we're declaring another variable, which is O. And in Lambda.js, you can do multiple declarations. This is just to say that it's, this is a nested let. So that we're declaring the second variable here. But it's, it gets prints out. It, it flattens it out when it's printed out. So second thing we're declaring is this O for OBJ. And then what you see here is a lock, a lock. And then inside, what do we do? We create an object. First field is proto. And what is the value of proto is get fields, right? Because this is a lookup. Uh, variable is ctor and string is prototype. And then inside, notice there's an in and then semicolon. So this whole thing, these two things should be inside a begin. This highlighted in blue corresponds to this line, second line to O. So let's look at this line. This line, what are we doing? Outermost is a get field, right? Because we're looking up something. Actually, sorry, the, the outermost is calling a, a function. So that's what we have here and here. Okay, so this you have to be careful, right? Because we're, we're calling a method. Sorry, we're not calling a method. We are um, calling a function, right? What are we passing to that function? three things, obj, and then the translation of all the arguments. So you have to go to all the arguments that are defined in the new, and you have to convert them. So this line is just saying that you need to translate every argument. And then you need to the, to the argument list, you need to add obj, which is whatever variable you gave here. And once you have all of that, you need to look up the field code and you need to pass all of that. And the field code is going to be the function name. Okay. And then the arguments are going to be these three. So this is a function. And this, the function of the function application. And these are the arguments of the function application. Okay. Which is made, is more explicit here. Do note that in the notation, we use the usual uh, F parenthesis rather than in scheme, there are no parentheses. It's parentheses around the, the function application. So next, let's look at... Um, actu actually, I'm going to leave that to the next video.